And now I'm pleased and honored to introduce our speaker for the day, Sherry Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much for having me this morning. So excited and so thrilled to be speaking on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Woohoo! <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. And there are several reasons for that. Um, I don't know if those of you love Thanksgiving because you love watching football all day long. That's not me, but I, it is some of you. I do get that some of you or maybe it's being able to put on our stretchy pants and eat all day long yes. that's you yeah yeah that's used to be me too not anymore unfortunately but but my favorite time the reason why Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday is I love the opportunity for family to come together to be sitting around the table to be laughing hearing the sounds of Thanksgiving laughter lots of talking a lot of talking over each other too I love that kind of chaotic kind of conversation I love it it's full and it's rich I love the smell of all the foods going on in the house I I love the warmth I love how the house gets heated up because it gets so hot from all the cooking I love that sensation I love all the sensory sensations of Thanksgiving and then it all culminates at the table when we're giving thanks. So I don't know about you, but we don't regularly make it a practice to sit around at our dinner table at our house and say what we're thankful for that day. But on Thanksgiving Day, we do. We sit around the table and we go, at our family, we go around the table and we each share what we're thankful for for the year. Now, of course, because it's me and my family, they're very, very clear that I am only allowed to keep it to X amount of things. One or two <laughs> things. <laughs> and the rest of it, they're like, save it. Save it, sister. You can tell us later, but keep it. We want to eat today. We want to eat today. <laughs> Same thing with prayer, right? Could you just keep it to a minimum, Sherry, so that we can eat, please? <laughs> Thanksgiving. What a wonderful time. But it's one of those moments in Thanksgiving, it's no accident that this Thanksgiving holiday, our talk topic, which is gratitude, falls right in the middle of the month of prosperity. So the Centers for Spiritual Living has been talking about prosperity all month long. And prosperity being an extension or a symptom of abundance, it's no accident that we're here talking about gratitude. Because gratitude comes from a realization of abundance. So I had a beautiful, wonderful experience. I had a conversation with our very own Kelly Hurley uh, last week, maybe a little over a week ago. She's a, she's a prosperity teacher. She also happens to be a member of Columbia Center for Spiritual Living. And I got to talk to her for about an hour on the phone. What a blessing, what a full, rich experience. So we had a conversation and she was sharing with me how important it is that gratitude and forgiveness be part of our spiritual practice, especially when we're looking to embody abundance for prosperity consciousness, and how important those two things were. Totally, totally recognize that, really get it. So it got me thinking, and I even told her on the phone, I said, this is perfect. I actually have a talk coming up, <laughs> and the talk is on gratitude. It was perfect timing and, of course, no accident, right? Divine synchronicity is more like it. So I thought about it. I went, I said, okay, I'm preparing for this talk. Now, what exactly is grateful? What exactly is being grateful? Now, I know in the most simplistic terms, it's about receiving and recognizing it, counting our blessings and giving thanks. You know, very simplistic, get it. But those of us that are sitting in this room don't do stuff like that, right? There's always some depth of being, right? I don't know, that's how I am anyway. It always has to be way deeper than that. So I go into my own inner exploration and I consider gratitude. And then I allow gratitude to flush over me so that I can recognize its presence and then make note touch stones on the process of getting to a place of gratitude. Because gratitude, being grateful, can be an adjective, 
you know, choose to describe a behavior. The adjective of being grateful, like, oh, that she's, you know, oh, thanks, this, this experience here. But for a grateful to be a verb, which is what those of us that are in spiritual practice on a regular basis want it to be, for grateful to be a verb, it must be an ongoing flow, an ongoing interaction and engagement with the life force we call God, so that that may come through in a continuous flow and be a verb. So being grateful then becomes a verb. So in that exploration, exploration and landing there, I realized that, ah, oh, that's what grateful is. Grateful is being full of greatness, full of godness having it completely embody your being so that then you are living from a state of consciousness called grateful, a verb. We're living from that place. So, okay, well, that sounds all good. Well, that's good, Sherry. And I could be like, okay, see you later. That was good. We're done. But unfortunately, that's not the case because those of us that are in practice, because it would be great if we could just say, okay, from here on out, it's November 19th. I'm going to live from grateful. I'm going to be that verb. I'm going to live from grateful. But, you know, those of us that are in spiritual practice on a regular basis know that it is so much easier said than done. So much easier. So it got me thinking about, like, okay, what is the process of landing in a space where you're in the state of consciousness called grateful? And I realized that there's three major components. There's being present. We cannot be grateful if we're not present. We cannot be grateful if we're not present to receive the gift. So there's presence. And then there's our receptivity, our capacity to receive. Our capacity to receive is huge. And then once we have received it in our full capacity, then there becomes a realization that, ah, abundance, ah, I am it. And then it's from that realization that gratitude is generated. And then as that vibration starts to vibrate in its highest possible form, that seeps out of us in the release of being the verb called grateful. And it's from that state of being that miracles arise. It's from that state of being that we can cause from that place. So great. Again, all right, goodbye, see you later, right? <laughs> Wish it was that easy. So let's chat about recognizing and being present. So this is my biggest challenge, and, and if anyone knows me, they know that this is true. You could be in a conversation with me, and this is why in my spiritual practice, in my practitioner sessions, I'm in a dyad. So if anyone has ever been in my, in my space, I am eye to eye with you here. So there can be nothing else but you in my, in my midst. Because I have a tendency to be such a great visualizer and such a great, I see all of these images, which makes it fantastic as a metaphysician. You know, I can go up into visualiz visualization real quick. But yet, to come back out of my mind and have an embodiment and then actually bring it onto the planet is a whole different gig. So, you know, as early as I can remember, I was challenged by this, and I'm so blessed, actually, my mother is here and surprised me this morning. So, the, when I was the elementary school age, and of course she can confirm this since she's here, <laughs> I was laying in my bed, and my mother used to wake us up for school every day, and she would wake us up in the most cruelest way. <laughs> she, <laughs> she'd either flip on the light, <laughs> And, you know, open up the blind, and all of a sudden, you know, Sherry, you know, get up! You know, or she would scream from the other side of the place, because she's busy, you know, she's got to get ready for work and leave too, right? But of course, the, the world revolved around me at that time. So here she is at the other end of the, of the house, and she's screaming to me, Sherry, get up! You're going to be late, get up! And I'm like, okay, Mom. Now, of course, my kids do this to me, too. And I'm like, okay, Mom, got it. Yep, I'm up. I'm getting up right now. I'm up right now. And so, is somewhere in my, in my body, I was, in, I was awake, but somewhere in between being awake and in my dream state, I got up, 
I went to the bathroom, took a shower, I brushed my teeth, I put my clothes on, I did my hair, and I was just chilling. And then the next thing you know, Sherry, you said you were getting up. You're going to be late for school. And I'm jarred with my entire body. I felt like the nerve endings and everything. And I'm like, pissed. I'm still here. Because <laughs> in my mind, I had already done that. I already did it. I was so mad that I was, my body was still laying in that bed and I hadn't done not one thing that I said I was going to do. I was furious and I seriously, I think I spent many years going, how the hell did that happen? I mean, it, I had done it. I did it up here. And you know, that sounds really funny, you know, because of course I was still sleeping and I was somewhere in that. But as adults, well, I'll speak for myself, I do that now. I could be completely clinically awake and be completely asleep all at the same time, simultaneously. You know, I don't know about you, but I've driven home from work and I've pulled into my driveway and I've been like, how the hell did I get here? <laughs> I don't remember, did I, pat, did I go that way? What, I, you know, because I'm stuck in my, in my mind. I'm stuck up here. I hadn't lived fully, I wasn't fully present. So then I ask, how much of our lives are we not fully present for? You know, I can, I've got three kids and one of them's grown and I can look back and go, whoa, where did those years go? Looking at a picture and go, wow, wow. You know, how much of it did, we, did I spend up here and not here? So it got me thinking and just the funniness about this, observing it, um, you know, my husband, I told him I was going to tease him a little bit about this. Um, my husband and I, before we got married a long time ago, um, went to get our pictures taken. And this was before we got married. And we went to the studio and, you know, the, the photographer pulls down the backdrop and she spreads it all out. I think we were like at the mall or something. And Jeremy and I sit on the, on the, the backdrop, you know, on the floor and she situates just us. She's like, Poof. You know, the flash goes off and then she situates us again and pff, flash goes off and situates us again and pff, flash goes off and she goes, all right, you're good. And Jeremy looks at me and he goes, what, what, did, was, was, are we done? <laughs> she, she already did it? And I said, yeah. And he was like, whoa, like, I, th I, thought, I thought she was just doing the lighting or something like that. <laughs> God, I hope I smiled. I don't even know if I smiled. <laughs> And it was so funny at the time, and I, you know, I laughed about it, but you know, it's one of those moments that like, to be fully present, we're present, we must be present in all of it. The system called our body, you know, like how, how are we present here and checking in with our body system? You know, what am I seeing? Who's all here? You know, what am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I feeling? And then, how is that interacting with the bigger system? In my husband's case, it was like, okay, what's actually happening right now? What, 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 what system am I in right now? Oh, I'm speaking. Oh, okay, yes, I got it, I'm speaking. Oh, my palms are a little sweaty because I'm speaking, right? Like these, being very present to this system and that system is incredibly important to being fully present, to be able to receive the gift that we must be able to receive in order to have an embodiment of what we truly are, which is abundance in God in essence. So once we're fully present to these experiences is when it's like, oh, okay, all right, I'm present with this. In there lies the miracle because every moment of every day is an incredible miracle. And we tend to want to resist being present for whatever reason. You know, sometimes it's challenging to be present in your life when something is not great. But I invite you to practice it anyway. Because when things are happening in your life that aren't so pleasant, that's when we get the diamond. That's when we get the miracle that is present for us. 
So when you can take deep breaths and be fully present in your mind, your body, and your spirit during the challenging moments, that's when we bring the diamond out of the mind. You know, I, I was reminded of this story, of the story of this experience, rather, that I had in being present. I used to be a cigarette smoker for lots of years. And I started smoking as a young, very young, young, young person. Very young person. And my kids are here and I won't say the age. <laughs> Extremely young. And I continued to smoke cigarettes until I was in my late 20s. And it ended up being a very large portion of my life at that time that I was a smoker. And in my 20s was when I started my spiritual practice. So by the time I was like 24, 25, I was like really journaling a lot about how much I couldn't believe I was smoking. Like, I can't believe I'm a smoker. It seemed kind of strange. I was a smoker. And I really, I didn't want to be a smoker. And so I was like, I, I, I would find volumes and volumes of journals where I would say, okay, today's it. I'm not gonna smoke cigarettes today. Today's it, I'm quitting today. And I would get to a place where about three days into my quitting smoking, I'd find myself smoking a cigarette. And I'd be like, how did I get here? I don't want to do this. How did this happen? And it was just like that experience when I was laying in that bed. I would go completely unconscious and before you know it, I'd be smoking a cigarette. How did that happen? The same thing happens with food. You know, like, ah, I told myself I wasn't gonna have cookies today. How in the world am I sitting here eating cookies? What happened in between the time I said I wasn't eating cookies and the time I'm eating cookies? Unconsciousness happened, that's what happened. You went to sleep right here while you were clinically awake, boom. <laughs> so in that experience when I said, okay, I've done enough spiritual practice, I know how to center into my being, I learned how to meditate, and so I thought, okay, this time, I'm gonna quit smoking. And I'm gonna stay completely awake in this experience so that I can really quit smoking because I do not want to be a smoker. So my daughter's young and I was a single parent at the time and we're putting up our Christmas tree. Now, we had an artificial, we've always had an artificial tree, and these artificials back in this day are not the same as artificials now, right? Now you can push a button, the tree goes up all in one motion, the lights come on, carolers jump out, you know? <laughs> like, we didn't get any of that back then. <laughs> this old school tree was, each individual branch goes in the little hole, right? And then you spread out the unsmushed, right? And then get it all done. And then here I'm only five feet tall and I've got a little girl and I'm like reaching, trying to get it all up and, and get it all done. I'm sneezing from the year long dust that it accumulated on it all that time. Getting all cut up and hives and craziness. And all I could think about was smoking a cigarette. That's all I could think about. So, oh my gosh, do I want to smoke a cigarette? But I had committed because this time I had committed to staying awake. Stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. Breathe, stay awake. So I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm here, I'm doing this. I have all my experience. I'm not gonna do it. So I'm reminded of my breath and I bring my mind into my body because it's imperative to be present that your mind and your body are completely in the same spot. Right here. So I'm bringing it right here and I'm breathing. I'm like, okay, I'm here, I'm with it, I'm breathing, and I'm very, I become very challenged, very challenged, because now I can feel the whole thing. I'm like, ah. So, okay, so I go into the bathroom so that I can stay present, so that I wouldn't get distracted by anything else. Again, just like my dyads. <laughs> so I go into the bathroom and I shut the door and I keep breathing and I enter into my body in its fullness, and I take deep breaths, and I can feel the yearning that I wanted in my chest for the cigarette, I could feel it. And I was like, okay, that's okay, I breathe into it. I'm breathing into it and I'm allowing it to be present because I am fully present in this experience. I'm staying awake. So I stay awake, and I can feel it in my body, and I, the present moment invites me to do stuff. 
okay, I'm gonna, I'm wiping off my body because all the yuck that's coming out of my body wants to come out of my body. Okay, great. So I stay with it. I'm staying present. I'm staying awake and I'm wiping off my body and I'm breathing and I'm staying present. And then as this experience continues to unfold, I'm now like shaking and I'm like still breathing. Tears spontaneously start coming down my face and I start crying and I just let it happen until all of it leaves my body in that moment. And it was challenging to stay awake because all I wanted to do was not be there. And I kept breathing and I kept staying present until that experience was over. And then I washed my face and I went back out there to put up the Christmas tree with my little girl. And that was the last time I ever quit smoking. Thank you. Thank you. And that was a big deal. It was a really big deal. Now, being and staying present in a moment that is challenging, of course, is like a great feat. You know, I felt really proud of myself. It was probably one of my proudest moments to be able to stay awake in that experience. But the, it's funny how we also will resist being present in the good. So here it is. Now, I knew the concept of what we resist persists. So that's why I was like, I'm staying awake for this baby, because I do not want to be a smoker. So I stayed present to it, because what we resist persists, and I was not going to have that persisting as a monkey on my back. No more. So taking that to something that's good, and that's also, again, how we don't spiritually bypass. By being fully present in our experience is how we end up not spiritually bypassing our lives. It's real. So bringing that into the great in our lives, the abundance, the love, the bounty that is available through God, through, through the beauty that I'm seeing in God as each and every single one of your faces, the bounty that is present with us, so why is it that we sometimes resist being present to this? Are we waiting for some really great, spectacular moment to be present for it? Right? The amusement ride, the skydive experience, you know, the, the enlightenment moment. You know, are we waiting for these dramatic experiences that are quote-unquote positive for us to be present? Well, they're not going to happen until we're practicing being present in the ordinary moments. And it is in these ordinary moments that the extraordinary becomes reality in our being. So, you know, my husband and I have been together now a long time, and I'm sure that those of you that are in long-term relationships, you know how these things go, right? Go like this. So, we had recently had a conversation about how valuable some of these very ordinary moments are. So, because, you know, when things aren't spectacular, and like there's like, you know, I'm getting romanced and flown to Rome and things like that, right? Well, that, that's just not very realistic all the time. But we started to talk about the ordinary moments that are of great value, really great value. And we realized that there, there's a, an hour and a half of the day that when we wake up in the morning before our kids are awake where we're just having coffee. So I've already kind of been by myself because I need that first. I've been by myself already. That time is gone. And we're just sitting there having coffee. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we don't talk. Sometimes we're watching the weather. Sometimes we're watching the news. Sometimes we're not doing anything. But it's that ordinary moment that we recognized and have been fully present to ever since that conversation that we just took for granted. And we took for granted that when that is actually the glue that has created a long-term relationship. It's extremely valuable, these ordinary moments. And isn't that the case in our lives? If we're gonna look back on our life, it's these ordinary moments. You know, have you ever looked at a picture of yourself 20 years ago and been like, damn, I was hot? <laughs> I mean, did you think that then? Probably not. You were probably ultra critical.
miracle then. So, that, so we weren't present to it. We took it for granted when we had it, you know? You know, looking back on pictures of our kids when they were young. You know, were we there? Did we take it for granted? You know, the, the vacation that we took. Were we there? Because it's in these moments that we really have a full embodiment of the abundance that's available to us in every single moment. And in these beautiful moments where these ordinary moments become the extraordinary moments, then we're faced with, ah, oh, all right, the bounty. So what happens in us when, that, when we recognize it, when we're fully present? So I'll speak for myself. I recognize my capacity to receive the abundance that is present to me all the time. Now, I brought this because it's my makeshift, it's my makeshift cornucopia <laughs> of the bounty that God is giving us all the time. And this is, this is big. But you know, there's a lot of times where in my capacity to hold the abundance that is available to me looks more like this. And, you know, there's a reason for that. And one of the reasons comes from worthiness. When we really recognize that we are worthy of the kingdom is when our cornucopia expands and becomes larger. Because if we think that we are only worthy of having this, then that's all we can contain. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with Paul Farini's work, um, Love Without Conditions, but he speaks about this in this, and it's about gratitude. And he writes, gratitude stems from worthiness, and it supports the experience of abundance. And this is exactly what he's talking about here. So what happens in this is not only sometimes do we have a small consciousness idea of our own abundance and capability, to receiving abundance, but sometimes if we're coming from a state of unworthiness, what ends up happening is this. Coming from a conversation of unworthiness in our own minds, like, ooh, that's too much for me. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, what ends up happening is God is trying to give us the bounty, and it's coming straight out of the bottom. Not in this cornucopia. <laughs> it's coming straight out of the bottom, just like that. And then here we are going, we're waiting for more. We're like, that's not enough. Because it's never enough when it's coming out of the bottom of the cornucopia because we're living out of a conversation that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for that. When the reality of it is we've been made in the image and likeness of God, we are plenty good enough. We are it. And when it comes to us and God is saying, here, here's, here, it is God's great privilege to give you the, the abundance and the bounty. And we're going, oh, whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. And then we cut it short like this. Like, oh, no, just, just a little bit. I'll just take a little bit. I don't want to be selfish. I'll just take a little bit. Right? And, you know, to bring that into a practical practical spiritual practice and the way that you can relate it to in your regular lives is how often are we taking in a full breath? Are we breathing shallowly most of the time? That is symbolic of how much life you are allowing to live you. Because breath is the life force that is living itself through us. And when we're constricting it and saying, oh, no, no, just a little bit, we are squeezing that off. Another way that we can tell that that is happening is when something comes to us and we quickly go to thank, right? So the, God is trying to give us the bounty of something. And we're like, okay, great, thanks, thanks, good, thanks. Very quickly, before you've actually taken it in. So this is, this is a capacity. Uh, actually, there's another beautiful author, uh, Gary Hendricks, if anyone knows him, The Big Leap. He talks about this as being like, the, it's called an upper limit problem is what he calls it. 
And it's about our ability, our capacity to receive the bounty of abundance that is available to us. So I have, oh, I did put it on good. I, I learned this um, in, in an experience I had with a, uh, a client of mine. She had been battling cancer. cancer. She survived cancer twice. And the third time, which is when I met her, she had stage four lung cancer. And she was referred to me by a friend because she wanted to be present during her transition. She was dying. And she wanted to be present. So we met once a week. And eventually it got to the point, and we would meditate, and we would pray, we would breathe. You know, sometimes she, it was just to be there for her to cry. You know, it's, it's okay. All of, whatever happened was happened, and I allowed it to be very present whatever it was. And eventually, she got to the point where she could no longer do my steps. For any of you that have been to my space, she couldn't come up the steps anymore. And so we started to meet at the down part of my house for a little bit, and then it got to the point where she could no longer come to my house. So I started to drive to her house. So I drove to her house and met a couple of times. And then this last time, now by this time, she's, you know, she's close. And before I left that day, she said, Sherry, I want to give you something. And she, she said, can you grab the box? She was too weak to get up off of the couch. She said, grab the box that's on the breakfast bar. So I went and grabbed it, and I brought it to her. And she said, it's for you. And I opened it up, and it was this Pandora bracelet. She said, I had my husband take me to the mall so that I could pick it out myself. Now, when I tell you, she is a fighter. <laughs> but this woman was probably 95 pounds. She could barely make it from one end of the house to the other end of the house without having to stop for a break because she, she couldn't catch her breath. The idea that this woman went to the mall to pick this out for me was so incredibly bountiful. Not to mention, of course, the, the financial gift you know, if anyone's ever bought a Pandora bracelet, I mean, my goodness, one bead is 50 bucks. You know, that doesn't even count. That, that's not about the bracelet or anything else. So the effort, the effort. She must have had to stop 50 times to sit down and take a breath to pick this out for me. So she's giving it to me. And as I experienced the totality of what the gift that she gave me, I had reached my capacity. Like there was something in me that was like, oh, whoa, like, whoa, like, can I really receive what she's really giving me here? And to stay present to it, I, it was almost too much. It was almost too much, and I, and I immediately go, I start to do this, I start to overthink. Have you ever seen this? Oh my God, thank you so much, thank you so much, I just want to give you my blood, thank you so much. I was doing that, and she, as my master teacher, she got annoyed with me. <laughs> She's probably thinking, girl, I'm sitting here dying and you're bleeding all over me. And she said, she got annoyed with me and she rolled her eyes and she said, Sherry, don't thank me again. And she was serious. She was, and, and I actually didn't know what had happened at that time. So it wasn't until later that I realized that, oh, I hadn't fully taken in the gift that she was giving me before I started to do that. Because as I'm overthinking, I'm overthinking because I had reached my capacity to receive the bounty that she had been giving me. Now, had I received the full bounty, I wouldn't have, one, felt the need to do that. And the other, she would have felt that I had received the bounty. It was an incredible lesson for me. And a lesson that I keep taking into my life every day because of it. You know, the last time that I spoke here, um, a beautiful gentleman, Phil, I see him here somewhere, came up to me and he was thanking me for my talk and he was sharing with me something that he had received from it. And I could tell just by his way of being that he really wanted me to receive this. Like he caught me out. It wasn't just like one of those, he caught me out there. He made sure that like, you know. And so he shared with me what he had gotten and, and his appreciation. 
And thankfully, because of the because we're in this teaching, I said, "Hey, Phil, you know what? Let me just let me take that in for a second, because I found myself doing that again. I found myself doing that again. Like I don't, you know, like." And so I I relaxed and I opened my heart so that I could receive what he was sharing with me. And then just like the presence before, tears started to come. This was this was landing in the experience of full abundance allowing the opportunity for my consciousness to expand in my ability to receive the bounty that is present to us at every single moment. Every single ordinary, beautiful, miraculous moment. Recognizing and bringing that and landing in that moment creates a realization. That realization being that we are that because Phil didn't hand me a cornucopia filled with bounty. What he did was he was the presence for me to realize the bounty that I am. I am that. I am all of that. I am the abundance and I'm the vessel by which abundance comes through. And when we land in that fullness, gratitude is a natural release. It is these beautiful moments that we land in the awe, the expansive realization that I am, you are, we are all of that. So this week, when you're at Thanksgiving, at a friend's house, wherever you are, stop, be fully present. Take it in with every sense you have. Take it as deeply and ex as expanded as you can with every breath and your open heart. Land in it. Get super calibrated that this is the I am speaking through you. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.